you know, first of all, Shasky, Friday night, because we talk Friday night. We're going to get to the calls. Kurt, Robert, BPA, everybody out there. We're going to get everybody on. I got triggered Friday 957 9570 Why'd you get triggered? Well, because I, I watched them right before halftime. They were in control of the game. And look, it's a long game. And the team's going runs. I feel like I'm doing a Steiny impression now. But like... I watched them the final minute of that quarter in the second quarter. And I go, there's no way in hell that they're going to finish this quarter out properly. And I knew it. And Halliburton hit that three. And I threw my, I threw the remote up in the air because I was feeding the baby. I threw the remote up in the air and I was like, LJ, the Pacers are going to blow the doors off them in the second half. And what happened? Complete well, control from the well, Pacers. I mean, well, entire I mean, second half. Well, I mean, haven't you watched this season? That's been happening all season long. Closing quarters. It's like I'm waiting for the I mean, dam to break. Well, it's been happening all season long. I know. All season long. First quarter of that game, Warriors <laughs> played great basketball. <laughs> Pods hit threes. I mean, they played great basketball. And yet it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. It felt like Halliburton was just like waiting in the wings. Well, he was shooting 19% from three in his previous nine of games. Of course he was. He was 12 of 62, and he goes 4 of 8 from three and gets to go to St. Warriors. Nibhart did what he wanted to do. Pascal Siakam like did what Nibhart he had. Look, lot. the Warriors played very well in the first quarter, yet it was a tie game, 38-38. They played really well in the second quarter, yet they're only up one. And all it took was one eight-minute spurt by the Pacers, and that's where the Warriors are different from years past. Teams are sitting there playing like it. Like Minnesota played like crap in the first half. He had their early down eight. They put together one good stretch. Boom, they got a lead. Teams are now getting right against the Golden State Warriors in seven minutes or less. That's what happened Friday night. That's what happened yesterday. The now, Marcus, the Marcus in Richmond special. The Marcus in Richmond special. Seven all minutes or less. A, all you need is eleven minutes against these dubs right now. That's what it looks like. Well, Curry was asked yesterday. I'm playing the Draymond cut as well. Because I do want to revisit the Pacers for a second. It's just what they were saying about that film. Because what I saw was a lot of guys not getting back on defense. I saw a lot of lackadaisical effort. I don't want to say the Q word, quit. But it, it was it was, it was was alarming how poorly they played that second half. Here's Curry when he was asked how tough it was to watch the Pacers film. As a player, you, you know when you're messing up and making mistakes and there's a lack of focus. And then you go watch the film and it's 10 times worse. That's what it kind of felt like, where every little play, we were one step behind every, I guess, possession that could have kept the lead a certain or kept the momentum on our side or, you know, forced them to think about us a little bit. We literally, it was play after play after play after play. So it is difficult to watch it and know you let one slip tonight. Like I said, I'm sure the film will look a lot better. Still a loss. So I think that honestly just speaks to, you know, our pride and our ability to come out and want to play hard on. No, we've had a, a tough go as of late. Yeah, it was nasty. Um, you know, we had control of the game at one point, and then we just gave it up and never got it back. How much are you now kind of tracking the Rockets? No, I don't give a damn about the Rockets. We're a very quiet team, so you have communication. You have, you have issues on defense when you have bad communication. Hold the phone. Hold the phone for a second. Well, that sucks. <laughs> so, you know, when you have to win and you you don't? It sucks. Draymond really said we're a quiet team. He's like the loudest guy in the league. He dropped how many episodes? No, he's loud. Okay, yeah. The rest but, of the team I would agree with. So that's what he's saying. Okay. He said we're too quiet. He dropped like five podcast episodes last week. But no, he said as a team, we're too quiet. We're too quiet. They don't communicate. Too quiet. Not enough talking. <laughs> Shots, you talking to me. <laughs> I mean, just... Uh, you know what the problem is, and I know you and I are like at each other's throats every now and then over this because we care. Like th this team's brought us so much joy, and it's been. You can make the argument, and I might make it that it's been more dynastic than even the Niners, as great as the Niners were, because they've they won in even like a shorter period of time and went back to more finals than than even the 49ers and their run. Even though the Niners got that fifth championship, like you can make the argument this was the most dynastic of dynasties the Bay Area has ever seen, the most highest of highs with minimal lows, some of the greatest players to ever play in any sport all at this time, and it's it's you're watching this thing kind of come apart at the seams, and it's not slow. It feels like it's happening quick in real time. It's tough to watch. It's tough. What? <laughs> the downfall is near, and it's coming hard. 
<laughs> that applies to every single team. Am I wrong? Right? Oh, I mean, no. I'm watching. I cover the damn team. I do the television show for crying out loud. I, I, I but it makes know, me it is, sad. No, 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 don't you think I'm and sad angry. too? And angry. I'm thinking about. Damn, am I even going to get to cover a playoff game this year? I'm honestly no, 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 told no, 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 my bosses in NBC far. Sports Bay Area. I said, "Hey, make sure you get me up to Sacramento for a playoff game." I'm not used to not attending playoff games anymore. That's how spoiled I am. What the hell am I going to do in late April? What am I going to do in May? June. Hi, I'm Bonte Hill, and I'm standing next to Randy Wynn. <laughs> You're looking live at Oracle Park. I don't use a looking live, but uh, yeah. I'm actually excited about the Giants. <laughs> I am excited about the Titans. Why do you always sound like that? Why, why do you guys make me sound I'm like I'm not? Brock Purdy. No, no, no. I, I, I told you guys yesterday on Gullick Fries. I called you guys. I think the Giants are going to surprise no, a lot of people. you did, and that was very awesome when you called in. Thank you for that. Yeah, Bonte. no problem. I, I did it right before TV. Bonte had to kick in. Listen. <laughs> we could feel him coming along at the end. That's why I had to get you off, you know? Well, it's getting 245. I love it. Starts asking me all these questions. I forget what we were talking about. But no, I'm excited about the Giants. Horan Solaire hit 450 feet yesterday. Felt like. Felt like he hit it 450 feet. This team's going to be but, good. But I year. think, B, where I, where I fall down, and you can disagree with me. Warrior fans can disagree with me. Totally fine. That's their prerogative. If you're going to lose at the rate that they've lost at this year, that's okay to me. If you're developing some of the younger guys, well, you and, may see that you may see that in and last that's, week. That so, like, you could say 30 minutes is a lot. Like to me, he needs to play in every closing situation. I'm talking about John the Kaminga in particular. Every closing situation as possible, so that he next year doesn't go through the okay. learning growths that we're going through now. But he's Bashaski. Grant me this. He's closed most games since January 5th. He didn't close yesterday, and they got to have a game. And Wiggins was just playing better defensively yesterday. Okay, so three he months. Better he's played in the league for three years. But, but, and so I, he's closed you. most of the games but, for three months. But I hear you. And like where I would come down is like, okay, great. It's mandatory that he closes every single one of these games okay. so that in year four, when I have to make a decision, and in the offseason I have to make a decision about his money, year four, I know that this guy is a trusted closer no matter what because we said this last year and now we're into the year three and it's like, I mean, what are we, year Listen, four, year but, five, but, year but, six? But, but Steve Kerr has given the youngsters opportunities. Trace Jackson Davis played nearly 29 minutes yesterday. No, it's not Brandon opportunities. Pajinski. It's no, no, dedication. Yes, Okay, they are dedicated. They're in the rotation now. I'm, I'm last year, Moody, particular last year, Moody and Kaminga couldn't crack the rotation. I mean, now you got a rookie starting. You got Kaminga playing thirty minutes. You got TJD playing twenty minutes, twenty eight minutes yesterday. The only odd man out has been Moses Moody. He hasn't played much. Now, where are you going to get? Fo- where are you going to fit Moses Moody in? I don't know. I don't. I don't know who you're going to play him over. I don't know. I don't know. So that's where we're at. Kaminga's playing. But again, I look at certain possessions and I understand why Kerr will pull Kamiga out. At times, Kamiga becomes a ball pounder. You got to play point five basketball. Now, maybe you can make the argument that Kerr needs to adjust to Kamiga and play and cater more to his style. Maybe that's a conversation in the offseason. Maybe they tinker with this offense. Maybe they tinker with the way they do things and how they attack offensively. But right now, they're still playing through Steph Curry, which means you got to play point five basketball. And at times, Kamiga gets lost into that. And I'm the biggest Kamiga fan, trust me. I'm watching every movement that he makes on the basketball court. I'm watching every dribble because he excites me with the way he plays. But at times, he's impatient offensively. At times, he rushes. At times, defensively, in a team defensive concept, he gets lost and breaks down. In a game like last night, 107-104, Kerr had it. It's a split action. You get the ball down to the post of Kaminga. You're moving too fast. Collie's sitting on it. You got to wait for Curry to come off that screen. Kaminga was thinking about something else. They steal it. They go the other way. They hit a layup. All right? That, that's that's why he's not playing at times yesterday down the stretch. Kerr's got to have it. Got to have that game. We can all agree to disagree. Who are the fans in the organization more invested in? Kamingo, or I'm just it's asking about the organization. The fans are invested in winning. No, no. The fans, they're not, they're, they're, see, miss what? me with this one with the fans. What? I mean, what the fans want. Who cares what the fans want? It's what the organization and the coaches want. We as fans are still going to watch. But we as fans have wanted Pajinski to know. start. We've wanted Kamingo to start. We've wanted this guy to play, that guy to play. Now the fans are flipping on Pajinski. So I don't care what the fans want right I, now. I, I don't. I don't, I don't care because the fans anybody, last month told me they wanted Pajemski to start. Now a month later, we got to get Pajemski off the floor. Like no, a segment of people are allowed about it. The fans, the fans, the fans, the fans. 
I don't care about the fans. Without right the now. fans, there is no sport. Like oh, you know what I mean. Like you, you, you got to have the money. Like that. That's who pays the bills. Like the fans, the consumer. The television contracts pays the bills. Well, who do you think's the watching? The television contracts. Yeah, but who do you think's watching? Right. Non-fans. Oh man, the fans. It's Come true. On. The fans are the ones watching. Like you have to acknowledge that. There's a consumer Whatever. base. Whatever. The fans. The same fans that won't show up to a game if the team's losing. This, those same fans? Right. Well, that's Come how on. fandom works. I mean, right. exactly. Well, so yeah, I don't like, want to hear about the fans, <laughs> like, what they wait, want. Like, what? It's about what the coaches and the organization wants. The fans want. Well, the, the fans, fans tell me you want a Pajinski to play 30 minutes a game, right? You want a Kamiga to play this. For, well, like, you want a Clay Thompson to come off the bench. You got what you wanted. And now the team's 36 to 34. What do you, what do you mean? The fans want everything. See, the fan, I can't keep up with what the fans want. I think the fans just want a day. better overall product on exactly. a night-to-night basis. Gosh. And it's just every night. It's just every time we, we, we all feel like we're, we're close to getting there, then they have some sort of setback like they've had these last two games, and then we're back at the drawing board asking, like we, banging our heads against the wall wondering what's we, going wrong. We all want that. You know what's going on? Is that the team's just not good enough. Can we wrap our heads around that? You're too small. You're not athletic. But don't give me this with the fans. Want this and that. The fans flip flop every single day. Yeah, but the fans are the reason that you can afford the luxury tax at the oh, rate that you can. Like, come right. on, we have to acknowledge that. Let's go to the cost, man. I'm not. I'm not going to get into what? this today. I'm not. It getting doesn't into that. pencil I'm year after year after that. year to lose I'm not, hundreds I'm not of millions doing of dollars. This today, Shasky. I'm not doing this okay. with that. BPA, what's happening? You're on the roast. Speaking I'm not doing fans. this. I'm not doing. Good morning, it. guys. Morning, guys. Yeah, I think. Look, it's not. It's not in the cards. Not close. They're the fifth worst team in the Western Conference. They're not even going to get the last play in slot, and they really don't deserve it. Um, and so it is what it is. And, like, I think it's like I would quote uh, Shakespeare and say, full of sound and fury signifying nothing. <laughs> this is the, state, is the story of the 2023-24 Warriors. They're, you know, they, the question now is can you, you know, can they reimagine this team for staff for one more? Because, you know, like that's, that's hard, to, hard to map that out in your mind right now. Uh, but like nostalgia tours over, um, they need to be, uh, pretty cruel and calculating this off season and nostalgia, run it back guys and contracts that's off. That has to be off the table. Uh, I mean, you're paying 70 mil for, you know, Kerr and Wigan or Clay and Wiggins, right? You need superstars for that. And they don't need neither are even like starter level, level caliber guys anymore. So you know what it is, but yeah. <laughs> What's that? No, no, good, good call, BPA. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say the fans don't matter. They do, but don't. I, I'm not. I'm not here because I, I, I get on Twitter, I get DMs, I get Instagram messages. The fans go back and forth every single day. What the fans want and what they want. I've heard them want so many different lineup combinations and this guy to play and that guy to play and that guy struggles. All of a sudden, you want this guy. Fans will flip flop. And I do it too. We flip flop so damn quick. So I don't want to hear about what the fans want with this basketball team. You want a Clay to come off the bench, you got it. All right? You got it. Now what? You want a pause to start? Now what? You want a Kaminga to play? Well, guess what? I want a Kaminga to play. He's playing 30 minutes a game. All right? So what, what else do we like? I'm not here to say, oh, the fans, this and the fans. Like, come on, man. Well, that's uh, the fans will turn on his team in a heartbeat. Well, you know that. You know that, and I know that, Shasky. Yeah, that's that's life, Monte. That's, yeah, that's, that's called but capitalism I'm not, but I'm in not, America. But I'm not here to hear that. You know? Like, Be, what do you stay, mean you're not here to hear that? Yours. That's the reality. Stand on yours. Like, Don't flip-flop and ditch the team what you, what, when things are going bad. They Don't just come around when like, everything is good. It's a come business. On, it's a, is it not a business? Gosh. Well, no, I think just to add on to it, I think it's not just so much the fans want to see Clay come off the bench or they want to see Kaminga close. They just want to see a team that's heading in the correct direction. Exactly. So when they see, you know, move Clay to the bench, well, that's the move what? that makes the team a little teams, bit better. Team Make, struggles. They thought this was the right direction. They thought this was the right direction. And now you got to pivot Obviously, into a different not, direction. Exactly. And that's going to happen in the offseason, yeah. don't you think? No, I, think I absolutely make agree with you. I think overall, that's what the fans are looking for. They just want to see positive direction. If they don't see it going in a positive direction, then you got to course correct. And that's where we're at right I now. Think so course I don't think that's some fans point. know what the hell they want. That's just me. Well, yeah, you know. Because the new age fandom is a little different. The new age fandom is a little different. Than what the old fandom well, is. I, new me, fandom has no patience. Well, I, I Let's would, be real. New fandom has no patience whatsoever. Well, now that is the NFL. I mean, look, Justin Fields got traded after two years. Zach Wilson got traded after. Like that's that, that's sports in in the modern age. B like the days of sitting a guy for five years. Like the Jordan Love thing is an outlier to sit that long and then finally get a chance. Well, that's how it should work. 
But patience. Well, the money's Nobody too big. But, but again, I go back to the business. The money is so big now, you're not going to sit there with a failing product at year after year and just collect losses. Like, the money it overrides everything. Like, this this is a business, as all the players acknowledge. And so, I look at it this way. I, we can talk about fans, course correcting and all this. I'm very interested. Like, this comes down to Steph, right? There's a big part of this that comes down to Steph. I, I just, God, what is going through his head right now? Because I, I, he, Kerr saying one thing at the podium yesterday. He's saying something else. I don't know, you know, where he falls in terms of like what they need to do this offseason. They got more decisions. Chris Paul decision, and that he has it on his own. The Clay decision. What do you do with Draymond? Do you just keep staying with course with them? Do you, do you keep the youngsters? They might lose their lottery protected pick, it, you know, if it's not one of the first three picks. Like, there's a lot. We don't know. Let's go to uh, Robert of San Jose. Robert, what's happening? You're under rust. Uh, thanks for taking my call, Monte and uh, Joe. Uh, I'm a little older than you guys. I've been going to Warriors games. Have families had season tickets since the early 70s. Uh, Rick Barry and Clifford Ray are those, my first Warriors that I rooted for. So a lot of these young guys that I young folks that I hear calling up uh, <laughs> kind of cracked me up. Uh, I saw a lot of bad basketball. Uh, winning 15 games, 20 games this season was what I saw up until the time that Steve Kerr got here. So this is all gravy for me. Uh, this is a young team. Young players are inconsistent. You have uh, rookies in Przinsky and Trace Jackson Davis. You have a first-year starter in Kaminga. What do you guys expect? If you look around the league at young teams, they're inconsistent. This is a young team. Three young guys. I'm not even mentioning Moses Moody. Relax. There'll be a better team next year. I think Pruszynski's a gym rat. I expect him to be better next year. Trace Jackson Davis is a gym rat. I expect him to be better next year. I think Johnson Kamega can be as good as he wants to be. Uh, he's got that kind of talent. Let's just let these guys marinate a little bit, get some experience this year, and see what happens next year. I think I think the part that other people in the organization would say is that they have so much financially invested into the older core, and you do have one of the greatest franchise players the game has ever seen in Steph Curry, and you don't just punt on years in the middle of, well, I guess toward the end of his career, right? That that That's just, I, that's not great business. That's not great basketball logic. Would you meet me there? It's kind of what I've been saying. I mean, I've been there. What? I've been there. Been where? where? That, that, what you just said. I've been at that point. I've been at that point. Which is you, what? Which is when you play youngsters, you run the risk of being inconsistent. You run the risk. And yes, you want to see what they have, but are they going to be ready? Steph Curry's at a level where he wants to play for championships. How long does he want to wait? How long? Yeah, but that, that's not Kaminga's fault. Right. Like that's Andrew, Andrew Wiggins hasn't been good enough. Exactly. And Draymond and, so, and Clay but, but and, and CP3. Those guys have and Looney. Kaminga may, not, Kaminga may not be good enough next year. He may not be good enough yesterday to play at a championship level. There's still flaws in his game as well as he's as well as he's playing. I love the way he's playing. Got to get a little slow. And maybe another all season, he gets in the lab and he becomes a different player. I think Kaminga has star written all over him. I mean, thank but God he went enough? on the tear that he did because they wouldn't have gone fourteen to four. They'd be well, they'd be like the twelve seed right well, now. Well, you know what? Maybe they're higher. Maybe they're higher. I don't know. Let's go to uh, without Kaminga. Let's go to Kurt, <laughs> Kurt Oakland. What's happening? Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. You know, I've been a Warrior fan since '92, so I've sat through the bad years where hopefully the Warriors could win more than twenty games, and they're the laughing stock of the league. When Zarko, Jabarkaba, and Gilbert Arenas gave Yao Ming a little bit of trouble, but Yao still won it. You know, Bimbo Coles, Tony Delk, B.J. Armstrong, they brought Jason Caffey in. Jason you know, Caffey. you go down the list. Bon and Terry Cummings. You know, so it's a hiccup. It happens. We just got to right the ship and stick with them no matter what. My only dilemma is when Kaminga drives to the lane, he yells trying to get a call. He doesn't get the call, and then he pouts. And it's like, okay, yeah, they're going to foul him. We get that. But he's not going to get those calls. And that kind of takes him out of the game, and teams understand that with him now. So they'll push him a little bit harder. They'll hack at him a little bit harder, and they'll frustrate him. 
and then he doesn't know what to do, and then on defense he gets lost because he's so mad about the play earlier. And, you know, once he counters that and figures out, okay, I'm not going to get these calls, let me just keep playing, he's going to be even better than what he is now. But he needs to stop yelling. You can literally hear him from the TV yelling. Well, what I'm interested in is, thanks for the call, Kurt. What I'm interested in with Jonathan Kaminga this offseason, when he comes back next season, is how he adjusts to the way teams play him. He's now elevated on the scouting report. You're no longer just, hey, this role player where, oh, hey, watch for this kid, double zero. He may come in on a break and he may make some highlights. He's now up on the pecking yep. order. The first page of the Scotty report, he's on it now. So he's going to garner a lot of attention moving forward here. And so it's he's going to have to make an adjustment. And I'm eager to see that. And he's going to get the minutes to do that. Again, he played 30 minutes yesterday. Played 30 minutes. Okay, we can nitpick, and I knew this would be a problem all season long. I, I I knew it, and nobody would have listened to it. The whole starting lineup thing is so overrated and overblown. They've had 25, 24 different starting lineups. It's about who finishing the game, right? That's what we're arguing about, who's finishing and who's not finishing. We've argued about that all season long, uh-huh. and I knew that would be a sticky point. Everybody's so worried about number three, Chris Paul, on the wing for us, ah, starting lineup, blah, 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 blah. has nothing to do with anything. Who's playing down the stretch? And we can then pick on who plays down the stretch, but when you have a team and you've been inconsistent all season long, I'll give Steve Kerr this. It is a hard job. Oh, right now, his job is very, very difficult trying to find the right combination every single game. At least Minnesota, they know. Our final five, we may have to tinker with one position. The Warriors are tinkering outside of Steph and outside of Dre. They're tinkering with three different spots every single night trying to finish a basketball game. And, and no the contenders Eagles. doing that. Well, I... No we'll, contenders we'll talk doing about that. It on the other side. No contenders doing that in this league. They know who their final five the Warriors is. Warriors aren't contenders. Well, now we know that. Now we know that.